everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. The new Netflix series Trinkets follows three girls who run in different cliques in high school, but find themselves at the same shoplifter's anonymous meeting. Today, I'm chatting with Brianna Hildebrand, who plays Elodie, the new girl who was working through grief while struggling to fit in. Take a look. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I'm Sean. And I'm a kleptomaniac. We've got a lot of new faces today. Feel welcome to share. You guys know each other? No. Got no need for oh, hey. You better keep an eye on that one. Let's see who can get the best shit in the shortest amount of time. Fine. There are three basic rules of shoplifting. And kids, don't try this at home. Number one, be invisible. I don't understand how I got here. Life is oppressive. Not why you steal. Two, only left with people you trust. I feel so alone here. Who doesn't? It's gonna be okay. And three, whatever you do, don't get caught. Come with me. <laughs> Holy shit. The three of us is just meant to be. Of a real problem. The only thing that makes any of it worthwhile is having someone to share it with. It feels good to put our truths into the universe. Why does coming here make me want to steal more than ever? Work the steps, Mama. Please put your hands together for Brianna Hildebrand. Hey. <laughs> I just saw you take a deep inhale. Did you? <laughs> yeah, how are you doing today? Was me preparing. I'm doing good, yeah. I've just been, you know, running around the city. It's yeah. been cool to be here. Good. Yeah. And I know that, you know, the show's now streaming on Netflix, so yeah. what has it been like to finally get your baby out there? Because I'm sure you guys put a lot of heart and soul into it. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been crazy weird, especially because, like, I, I'd only seen the first two episodes, so it's like I was watching it with everyone else, you know, <laughs> when I sat down to watch it. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a hard time watching myself in general, so, yeah. but. I was gonna say, did you then finish the whole first season or were you like, two's enough? You know, I've gotten pretty deep into the season. Um, I do know what happens, right. you know, so, but like, yeah, I, <laughs> it's really a challenge for me to watch myself. I don't know what it is. I think that's probably uh, pretty common though, because yeah. I think you're probably in the moment, you know, when you're doing yeah. it and it's hard. Yeah, and then you, you can't watch go back it. and fix anything if you didn't like it. Right. right, and I watch it and I'm just like, oh, that's what I looked like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Well, let me tell you, you looked great. Uh, the show, <laughs> I got five episodes in, and I will say you, there's some stuff that happens around the fifth episode too that is very great. Yeah, and, it's a major episode. Uh, intense. Um, <laughs> so tell me when you first saw the script for Trinkets, what was it that kind of made you interested in, in being a part of this project? Uh, well, I just was interested because, I mean, initially, it's a story about three girls, and I just love that. I love any story about female friendship. I'll pay to see your movie if it has females being friends in it. Like, I love it. Because um, it, it just makes my heart feel warm and fuzzy, you know? Um, but also, I, I thought that Elodie was a really um, different character for me to play. Since I've done Deadpool, I've kind of played a lot of, like, guarded apathetic type characters, which I don't mind. I actually, I have a fun time doing that, but um, you know, I just wanted to like challenge myself a little more. Yeah, and let's talk about Elodie because my my first um, inst like reaction in the first episode was, wow, you bring a lot to her that's nonverbal because especially in the beginning, Thank she's you. in this new space and she there's not a ton of dialogue in that first episode, but okay. I was really impressed with just how I was able to understand how she was feeling because of your performance. So take me Thanks. through how you approached her. Um, you know, I keep a journal for every character that I have, so um, I started a journal for her. Um, in the book, she writes only in poetry, so I started writing poems, because, um, you know, I feel like she's really sensitive in that way, and um, yeah, it was, you know, the, a big challenge for me was sort of using dramatic imagination about grief, because it's something that I've not really experienced with someone so close to me as Elodie has. So uh, yeah, I did a lot of work with my coach for that. And yeah. And you mentioned the book. So this is based off of a book, Drink. It's uh, by Kirsten Smith. And she also right. is one of the creators of the show. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> tell me how closely it follows the book or does it take its own liberties? Like what will fans of the book see that's new or different 
in the in the show? Um, yeah, I think I think most of the show is really different from the book. I mean, the characters' names are the same, and they sort of have the same attitudes, but I think they're really planning on you know taking it a different route, and um, which is cool and fun and exciting. You know, everyone loves a, a thrilling shoplift. <laughs> And shoplifting is something that I think, like, okay, maybe I'm speaking for myself. A lot of my friends in high school experimented with shoplifting. Yeah. It's like a rite of passage for a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely have shoplifted. And when I was a teenager, I was, yeah, a, a real rebel back in the day. <laughs> what did you take? Uh, just stupid stuff, like bracelets, rings, stuff I didn't need, really. <laughs> we never need it. <laughs> right. We never need it. Right, yeah. I actually told this story earlier, but I uh, shoplifted like a handkerchief. Handkerchief? <laughs> Sick. From, from, yeah, right? Nice. Well, I was real cool. In this world, <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Uh, from a Hobby Lobby. <laughs> from a Hobby Lobby, guys, if you know what that is, if you're from the Midwest. And uh, I, got, I felt so guilty that I just chucked it out of the car window on the way home. Like, I couldn't even. Oh, that is really sweet. <laughs> I respect that about you. I did not do that. You kept all the stuff. <laughs> I kept it, yeah. Somewhere. But these characters take that to a whole new level, yeah. uh, which is why they're in Shoplifters Anonymous. So right. did you look into the psychology of a real kleptomaniac before you yeah. got into this role? Yeah, I did a lot of research about it. I found a lot of crazy like Tumblr websites that I didn't know about prior. Um, <laughs> actually, the director of the first two and the last two episodes, uh, Sarah St. Ann, she gave me this magazine that had this like huge excerpt about... Um, young women and shoplifting and how young women shoplift more often than men and it, all of these statistics and it was really fascinating to like get to learn that and like delve into that and I think the show really reflects to you know it kind of shows you what pushes people to shoplift or uh, why people feel out of control and what compels them to shoplift even if it's you know not necessary yeah that is something cool you know as these girls get closer as friends, you start to understand maybe some of the things you're dealing with at home yeah. uh, and why they're acting out in the way that they are. Yeah. Uh, what do you think motivates Elodie to shoplift? I think Elodie, her mom recently passed and I think that that is a hole that she's trying to fill in her life with everything, you know? I think she's trying to make friends and she's she's trying to really grow come into herself and she's having a hard time doing those things so the thing that makes her feel in control is taking what she wants yeah uh, the show does a really beautiful part of showing how happy she is when she is shoplifting too yeah <laughs> that that like made me smile at first i was like oh this is great like this is her disneyland a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's know? like her playground you know right. it's like, i think maybe she feels the most herself when she's doing that yeah. which is Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned her coming into her own, which is something we all experience in high school. Yeah. Uh, she's also queer. And I love how that's written into her character just very organically. There's not some big dramatic coming out. It's just something that she shared yeah. with her friends. And they're just like, cool, that's awesome. Right. Let's go get pizza. Uh, so <laughs> wh why was it important for you? Or how important is it to represent a young girl in high school coming to terms with her identity in this at this time? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, ridiculously important. Growing up, I didn't really see lots of LGBT representation. And when I did, it was like, Mom, Dad, this is me, yeah. you know? <laughs> or it was like, I can't believe I'm feeling this way. And I just love that this series, it just is what it is, you know? I mean, I was out in high school. I'm, I come from Texas, so it was, it was interesting. But um, I was out, and I think that's realistic, you know? I think kids nowadays are... They're really in touch with who they are, um, maybe a lot sooner than they used to be. So I think it's important to have that kind of representation and like, you know, someone in a really religious family in the middle of America can watch it and be like, I'm not alone, you know? That's important, yeah, I think. Netflix in general, I think, has just done a really amazing job at sharing different narratives. I know they have the PRISM yeah. campaign and I read through some articles and it's just so amazing how many people of the LGBTQ community are behind the camera, in front of the camera on Netflix. I just applaud yeah. them for that. Yeah, the, yeah, that PRISM shoot was the best too. I think that was like the only shoot I've ever been on where everyone on set was queer, just like wearing rainbow colors, like sh shouting yes while you were running down. Like it was amazing, it was such a cool shoot. Yeah. I saw the photos. They were beautiful. Oh, they thanks. were the coolest. Yeah, they were really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned that the friendship is really the foundation of this story. Yeah. Uh, so take me through working with your two co your co-stars. What has that been like? 
It's been really great. It's really funny because we're all so different from our characters in real life. Like um, Tabitha is non-binary. She identifies as they, them. Uh, she wears a lot of black. She's really into like metal music. Uh, Quintessa is. But as Tabitha, <laughs> she's not any of that, right? Or they are not any of that. And um, Kiana is just like the sweetest, most loving person, like the biggest heart, the easiest person to talk to. And it's funny that she plays someone so guarded. Um, but we all get along great. I mean, it was a really fun time shooting and the first set I've ever been on with people my age, because normally it's me and um, older people or it's me and children. So yeah, it was really fun. I had a great time getting to know them and we still talk and yeah. You guys shot this up in Portland, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what was that? I love Portland. Yeah, Portland was super cool. It's a cool city. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun nights <laughs> hanging out, you know? It was yeah, a good did time. you guys get to, like, do the nightlife or music scene? Like A little bit. I mean, the bit. times that we, when we had time, when we were all off, we would go out every now and again um, or just, like, hang at one of our apartments, you know? Yeah, it was nice. We went bowling. The first time we met each other, we went bowling. It was like super awkward, which was great because it broke the ice because we all just looked really dumb. Nobody looks cool bowling. You can't look cool bowling, no. Who won, though? Um, <laughs> not me. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> So we obviously see you in Trinkets. Uh, a lot of your fans know and love you from Deadpool. But how did you get into acting from Texas? Um, it's like a, it's this really long and weird story, but essentially I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I play the guitar and I used to make CDs for my dad to listen to on the way to work. And uh, he had a work friend who heard them and sent one of the CDs to a talent scout that he knew. And then she approached me like, hey, uh, you should try coming out to LA. Like we can do a bunch of stuff. We can get you into this competition. and. Uh, long story short, I ended up moving to L.A. when I was 17 and just being, like, ready to do it, you know? And I, I was in acting class every night for ever, you know, like a year and a half maybe. Yeah. So is music still something that you want to, you know, pursue? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, a little difficult, like, traveling around so much, but I, I really do enjoy music. It's something that I am always doing in my off time anyway. So, yeah, something I'd like to see through yeah. that's another cool thing about trinkets the music is on point yeah the music the is music amazing is really right point. and what's cool is um sarah she made a playlist for trinkets so uh, so many of the songs in the show she uh, like we were actually listening to while we were filming it which is really nice it's, yeah and i like it. there's certain points where they'll play it one way and then for a more dramatic scene later it's the same song just rearranged yeah and i was like oh that's a nice little touch if people are paying attention the music is really sort of yeah, important. the music's great. I mean, I I've I still listen to the playlist that Sarah sent us. So yeah. So what's next for you? Trinkets is out on Netflix. Trinkets is out on Netflix. Any other projects? Um, I just finished filming a movie called Playing with Fire. It's about smoke jumpers, which I didn't know a lot about before, but they're very cool. You should look them up. <laughs> um, there's 339 of them in the country, and uh, yeah, it's like a family comedy movie. Yeah. So uh, I spent a lot of time with a couple of kids who were the sweetest, and uh, John Cena stars, Keegan Michael Key, uh, John Leguizamo. Is I mean it. It was such a blast shooting. John Leguizamo, I love. He's amazing, right? He's hilarious. He, yeah, he's so he's so versatile too. Like I just saw watch yeah. him, and when they see us, like oh, so the good. The way he can yeah. turn dramatic, I was like, wow, this guy. Yeah, he's he's great. We had great movie conversation, theater conversation. On that, I'm just curious, um, what other sort of artists or, you know, whose career do you sort of look at and you're like, I kind of like what they're doing. I like that vibe that, that kind of inspires you as an actor. Oh, man. Um, I really love Kristen Stewart. Mm. And I love Ellen Page. Yes. That's my whole heart. <laughs> um, obviously, I love Meryl Streep. I would be ridiculous not to. I mean, there are a lot of people that I really admire. I try not to, like, maybe this is a bad thing, too. I try not to, like, attempt to emulate anyone's career or set, um, be really, I don't know, specific about the things that I want to do in the future because I kind of am having a fun time just, like, having fun and trying to be versatile and, you know, doing my thing. I find that I have more fun that way. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just stressed, yeah. you know? Is there any really amazing advice you've ever gotten from, like, an 
uh, acting teacher or a mentor just about being in the moment or being in this industry? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've gotten a lot of really great advice from so many different people. But I think one thing that I've learned so far is just like to chill, you know, like to literally just chill out. <laughs> But I'm also like, I'm a very type A personality. I'm like a perfectionist. I like things to be, you know, where they need to be. And sometimes I feel like, when I feel like I'm not where I need to be, it it gets overwhelming. So, um, yeah. Just chill. Just just chill, dude. It's not that serious, <laughs> you know? It's really not good. It really isn't. Just chill out. You only live once, you know? YOLO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we do have a couple of questions for the audience. So who do we have first? Right there. Hi. Um, not to put you on the spot, but uh, is there anything that you stole or really wanted to steal from this set or from another set on another project? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I really wanted to steal the jacket that Negasonic wears in the first Deadpool. Nice. I really wanted to steal that. I mean, it was really expensive, and it was the first Deadpool, and they went through budget cuts, so I know they would have been like, you thought you were going to get this jacket. <laughs> but yeah, I would, <laughs> I would steal that. <laughs> Thank you. That was a good question. <laughs> yeah. Next one. Hi, we have an online question from our site, buildseries.com. Um, so there's obviously a lot of stealing that goes on in this show. Yeah. Was there a particular sequence that was the most fun to film? Like, there's a lot, huh. like, a lot of Hollister that goes on. Like, any story? Yeah. Or? Hollister was really fun to film. <laughs> Hollister was a good scene to film. Mostly, I think, because it was, like, 3 in the morning. So we were all just delirious. And also, somebody brought Chick-fil-A to set. So <laughs> <laughs> made my day. Um, yeah, I think... I don't know, honestly, all of the shoplifting parts were like the most fun parts. Just like pretending to be sneakier than I actually am in real life, you know? <laughs> I hope this doesn't wake up a desire inside of you to shoplift. Cause you're like, yeah, the shoplifting things were so go. fun. <laughs> Where's the nearest department store? <laughs> There's so many in New York. There's still so many things here, guys. <laughs> oh my God, wow. No, wow. I'm not saying you should, I'm saying you could. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> Don't come for me. <laughs> well, guys, I did really enjoy Trinkets. Uh, like I said, it just gets more layered and deeper the further you get into the series. And so yeah. I cannot wait to see where it goes. And I'm crossing my fingers for a second season because I did already read ahead and I know how it ends and I need to know what happens. So. Yeah, and me too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you guys want to check it out, Trinkets is streaming now on Netflix. Put your hands together for Brianna Hildebrand. Mm -hmm.